intro included, ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome, of course, to the Sinshot Podcast. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong. And I'm Crooks. And tonight's show is going to be pretty awesome. We have a special guest tonight whose name is Chris Neff. Uh, so he's going to be talking to us about how he prototyped a spin top called the Sweetle and how 3D printing allows him to make iterative changes up to and after release. But first, uh, a little bit of announcement on the shop. Uh, we are, of course, located at 1075 American Pacific Drive, Sweet C, that's in fabulous Henderson, Nevada. Unless you're a member, you're gonna have to wait just a little bit to come check out the shop. Uh, Sin Shop is currently closed to the public uh, for now, but we are open to our members. While you are, uh, while the, we are closed to the public, if you are in a shared space elsewhere, make sure number one that you are that you are wearing a mask, that you clean tools, surfaces, and material before and after you use them. Do what you can to limit exposure to yourself and others, and for Pete's sake, wash your hands. Everyone is going a little stir crazy by now, but due to those that have done their part, we're helping to keep ourselves and others safe as businesses gradually are allowed to reopen and the outside world gets a little less pandemic-y. So we keep pushing forward. Eventually we'll come out the other side, but to stay open on the shops open, to stay updated on the shops open status, check out sinshop.org forward slash COVID status to find out the latest information and to make sure that you're notified of our future events, including virtual ones, just like this, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sin shop. And with that, I'm going to finally take a breath. And I'm uh, glad like the one day, you know, in the far distant future, probably when you don't have to do that intro. Oh man, I'll be so happy. <laughs> oh, I will be, I'll be so glad. Our first couple of shows, it was a, you know, real quick intro. Here's here's who we are. Here's where we are. We're done here. But anyway, so yes, Chris, welcome to the Sin Shop podcast. Great to be here. Outstanding. So uh, just to introduce you guys, uh, or just to introduce you, uh, this is actually the first time that we've ever had someone on that was uh, number one from another state, number two, who's not a member of the shop, and number three, who is the first place winner of the 2011 and 2016 World Spin Top Contests. So That's true. So to uh, to give a little bit of background, let's see, I'm not going to bring up the video because I'm almost positive that's going to end in tears. So what I will do instead of that is show one of these. Now, that thing right there, that is a spin top. Now, to the uninitiated, can you can you take us through what a spin top is? It's uh, it's so you know what a yo yo is and uh. You know what a you might know what a Diablo is. It's like a big Chinese yo-yo mm -hmm. uh, where there's a uh, two sticks and then a string going between the sticks. The difference here is that it's when it's a spin top and the strings around the axle on the tip. While the top is resting on the string, it's precessing, so it's it's rotating, kind of like the physics experiment that you might have seen in school where you hold a bike tire. Uh, by an axle off to the side, and then the whole thing kind of spins. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but then more simply, I mean, it's been a toy uh, uh, before yo-yos, actually, in the U.S., like just a basic dime store toy. You wind it up, you know, a smaller kind of handheld version where you, you wind it up with a string, mm -hmm. you draw a circle in the dirt, and then you all try to throw, you know, a, kids on a playground or whatever, try to throw it. And, he spends the longest or you knock each other out. It's been a, a game like that for many, many years. Um, and then not until maybe the sixties that it become something more like a yo-yo where you do tricks with it, where people started to name tricks and uh, sharing tricks. And, and it's largely due to the Duncan yo-yo demonstrators mm -hmm. who are going, who are going to uh, playgrounds and schoolyards and saying, Hey, this is a trick and you give it a name and then people can pass it on. So it, it didn't take off like yo-yos did ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a, a lesser known uh, skill toy. Um, but many yo-yo manufacturers have made a spin top and given it a try. And that's kind of where we're at today uh, as far as products that are out there. Yeah, you mentioned. I hope that made a little sense. Oh, yeah. You, you mentioned about Duncan. And that was one of the things you know I found out when I was you know looking up, looking through everything for the show is uh you actually were picked to do duncan how-to videos that yep. was now that was what 98 that was 99 2000 okay um when i did that 
And the fun thing is, is that I learned on the previous Duncan video. My, uh, my roommate and I bought the Duncan video off the back of the package. We sent our money in mail order. It was that long ago. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, next thing I know, I'm helping shoot the new video to replace it. And, and that video has been replaced since then. But, uh, that, that was a very unusual moment for me. I'm uh, sure. Yeah. How did, how did that, that. How'd that happen? Hank? how did you become the face of Duncan? That's a good, that's a good question. Uh, kind of the right place, at the right time. Um, in uh, 97, there was a huge boom in Japan. There was a kite store doing tours mm -hmm. with their kids that they had. They started a yo-yo workshop. And the kids that got better, they just said, well, let's go make some money. <laughs> and they started working with uh, Bandai in Japan mm -hmm. doing tours. And it was, a, it was a nationwide hit instantly. And Bandai didn't have yo-yos yet. And so they hired all the American yo-yo manufacturers to make yo-yos for them they put their own like bondi stamp on them and then sold the snot out of them hmm. and then they had time to start making their own so what they wanted to do was to do a yo-yo tour in the u.s with their yo-yos okay um so they were hiring anybody they could that was old enough to hire to do uh you know school assemblies or store demonstrations or new spots or whatever and and uh i won't go into my whole story but i was i was already uh yo-yoing at a kite store in kansas city oh wow. i was teaching workshop i had i had i had graduated from uh k-state i have a degree in architecture and i was kind of taking it easy after graduation just wanted to i don't know just do something else for a minute and yeah. i walked in this kite store i got a job there and then all of a sudden i'm doing these yo-yo demonstrations and yo-yo workshops and so anyway through that network of the kite stores they hired every pro they could find to do a nationwide tour and this was 97 98 mm -hmm. And so I was working at Wind Wizards uh, with somebody you might know, Renee. Um, and uh, we, uh, gosh, when we weren't doing tours uh, around anywhere in the U.S., we were doing stuff in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. We had up to 80 kids showing up a night. Uh, well, not a night, but every week at the Independence Mall for Yo-Yo Workshop. Right. And uh, so anyway, uh, the boom was going crazy. And Duncan called me uh, and said, we want you to work for us and do a tour. And this was right at kind of the end of the boom. So anyway, I worked for Duncan for a little while doing a school assembly, store demonstrations. They put me in an RV in New Jersey, and I drove to Los Angeles mm. uh, doing school assemblies and store demonstrations all throughout the – all along the way. Anyway, uh, so the yo-yo thing is closely tied to the spin top stuff, and they had spin tops also. But I wasn't really into it then. Uh, spin tops. I was just the yo-yo demonstrator, mm -hmm. and uh, I put everything down and moved home and got an architecture job around 2001. And then around 2009, I kind of checked in on everything, and it just gone crazy. Like the yo-yo tricks were way more impressive. Mm -hmm. Everything just exploded. But spin tops were still not taking off, and uh, I was drawn to it. And so basically, since 2009, I've just been into spin tops again. Yeah. So one of the things that, that I remember being a big um, like shift, like, and, and I know about, I know very little of this. I've, I've, I've basically driven tour buses past yo-yoing and been like, Oh, that's what's going on over there. Huh? <laughs> but uh, one of the big innovations I remember was the whole freehand thing, right? Yeah. Where you'd have like uh, a, my buddy. Yeah. yeah. My buddy, uh, Steve Brown invented that and unveiled that at one of the big contests. And, he taught me and I was doing it also. I was part of that, mm. uh, of that initial wave of that way of yo-yoing. Yo-yoing is interesting because it has genres. There's regular yo-yoing, there's freehand, like you mentioned. And that's where instead of tying it to your finger, there's a weight at the end of the string. So you can throw the weight. So you got the yo-yo flying around, the weight flying around, doing tricks. Then there's two yo-yos at once. There's yo-yos that aren't attached to the string and flying all over the, everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then there's, there's something else I'm missing, but they have distinct genres. And then there's contests that award each different division, if you will. Oh, okay, cool. So, so, okay. So moving on to the, uh, your, your design. So, so well, actually, how did you move from a, a person that is into that field? How did you move from there into, you know what? I should, I should put out a, I should make a top. 
Like how'd yeah. you how'd you move between the two? Well, it's it's easy because the only people that are making tops or have been since two thousand mm-hmm. are yo yo manufacturers, and I have a little bit of juggling background. You know, I Diablo, I uh, and then juggle and that kind of stuff. I can eat fire. Anyway, so I, I know a lot of jugglers and. In my opinion, the spin top is more like a juggling apparatus than a yo-yo apparatus. It's more of a performer's prop mm-hmm. than a toy for kids because it's hard. Yeah. I mean, learning spin tops, the learning curve is much different than yo-yo. So you can get a, a kid started on yo-yo pretty quick. A top, it's tough. It's really tough. Mm-hmm. So, um, so the problem was there just weren't any available. Uh, in 2000, uh, Roughly 2000, Spintastics, Yo Yo Jam, and Duncan all came out with uh, spin tops and started what, you know, what would be my era of product, you know, products that were available. That was it. And there were problems with each one of them. <laughs> you know, uh, Spintastics was probably the best, but the, the Bearing King from Duncan would break as soon as it hit the ground. You had to put electrical tape on it, but it, that's not written on the package. Oh, okay. And, you know, so, I mean, that product being out there made more people not spin tops because the damn thing just broke. Yeah. Anyway, and then uh, the yo-yo, the yo-yo jam tops were amazing, but they had tips that broke it. Everything was very frustrating, and so um, I was kind of into woodworking. And you know, there were other, there was other examples like Eric Wolf and Alan Gray and Walter Watts. These mm-hmm. are guys have been making tops on a lathe, and so you see that. And, Whoa, I'll give it a try. I scored a lathe on a on Craigslist for three hundred bucks, and uh, just I, I let it sit there for about two months because i was scared of it you know you hear about people losing their hair to a, to a <laughs> lathe or something I, I was genuinely scared of it um but i finally got my feet wet and made a little stupid little top and and it just went off from there Very um, cool. but spent a lot of time developing my own method for making a hollow top because that's that's uh that's challenging oh and this this video will show you like what they do it's it's difficult to describe the tricks um, and I have kind of a herky jerky start here, but after that, it's a good, it's a solid three minutes of tricks, mm-hmm. which is hard to do, uh, with a top that likes to fly off the string and hit the ground. Yeah. So pretty much from, from here on, I'm doing tricks. Now these are all regenerations. And that means that each trick that I'm doing is designed to add spin to the top. Okay. So you notice I didn't, I didn't even wind that top up. I just spun it, you know, I spun it with my hand and started doing regenerations. Mm-hmm. And so, and, uh, to score points here, I'm just doing, uh, three repetitions of each trick to score points and then moving on to the next trick. And, uh, so doing the same trick, multiple, t- another person doing the same do, trick uh, multiple times gets you, gets you more points. It's not like, oh, he just did that trick. I don't care anymore. It's that actually gets you more points. It gets you up to three. Oh, so okay. you're, you're, yeah. So you're doing three reps. So you get three points of that. And so there you balance it from tricks where you're just sort of you know, point, point, point to banger tricks where you might get five points, you know, for a more impressive whip or something like that. Okay. And you'll, you'll see something like that coming up. I know the thing where you wrap it around your arm is just crazy. Oh, I think it's. Yeah. And you also get points for tricks strung together. Yeah. And so as far as I know, this was the first freestyle where it's a solid three minutes where I only use one top Mm -hmm. and I didn't even wind it up. I just spun it with my fingers. Yeah. So I'm uh, the idea is that I'm accruing points just by continuing this big flow of tricks. Sure. So I guess most other and, people they stop and wind it in the middle of a three minute yeah. set. Yeah. Oh yeah. They bring it. They bring out like a whole briefcase full of tops and they throw one to mess up and then throw another one in it. And it's hard to watch, in my opinion, <laughs> um, some of these people who just aren't quite stage ready. But we just don't yeah. have as many players. You okay. Know? So you, we we kind of let a wide range of skill up on stage. And, uh, but there, there are good players. It's just hard to get them all in the same plot, spot. There's just so few of them like that whip right there. That yeah. was, that should have scored some points. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And I think the one where you tie it around your arm. Yeah. I'm glad I was able to get the video working cause I, I wasn't sure I was going to do it. And then I just kind of took the chance. Yeah, here we go. This is nuts. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I, I actually see before when I was a, a yo-yo pro or whatever, I, I didn't really work on my freestyles very much. I yeah. mean, I did, but not anywhere near as hard as for this performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just felt so amazing to, I mean, I had some mistakes, but to, to go clean 
for three minutes and not have to start over was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love at the end. I think it is. It looks like you like, yeah, no, no, not there. It, it kind of looked like up. it kind of looked like you messed up or something like that. And you walked away like, oh, man, that sucked. Ah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm going It'll be here in just a second. I was going for a pretty good whip and I was just hoping to land it. And then there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's all if I rude. Hit that, if I would have hit that, it would have just been amazing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway. oh, you only got 96 per, uh, points out of 100 or something like that. Yeah, they they uh they put it on a curve. So it basically, if I had negatives, which I would have for uh-huh. dropping the top a couple times, and so the next score was like seventy five. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but he came back. That was Eli Hickerson, the, the second uh, place, and he came back and he he was very impressive this last year, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Oh man, after after screwing up like that, I mean, how can you show your face again? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, well, I, uh, I, and I got to judge uh, 2019. I got to judge the the contest with a couple other judges, and that was really cool. Oh, that's awesome! That's really cool. Yeah. So okay, so that's a little bit about what spin tops are, and you know what the, the the whole background of it, just so people know what in the world we're talking about. So with this, the, so we're talking about a product of yours that you've been working on for a while now, called the Sweetle, right? Yep. Okay. So. In any design project, there's usually a goal, like a problem that you're trying to solve for. And we talked a little bit before about some of the weaknesses in other uh, yeah. in other tops. What were you? So it, it sounds like that's what you're trying to solve for. There was the weak bearing problem. What else was? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. There, there are several. Um, so this is one right here. Uh, uh, I was trying to make the top for Goldilocks. Um, I remember. That we were talking about just a minute ago, I got all the tops you could buy and then they weren't, you know, they weren't doing it for me, you know? And so I remember wanting this top. I wanted a top that was durable, that mm-hmm. didn't break. I wanted it to be a little bit bigger because I mean, the yo-yo size tops are, only, I mean, it looks like a tiny ball for a performer on stage. I mean, it doesn't, you can't even tell what's going on. So I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, but not too big. Cause I was still intimidated by bigger tricks. I remember thinking that mm-hmm. I wanted it to be, uh, be able to have a, a, a bearing tip and a fixed tip. So when that's locked down, you can do different tricks than when it's a bearing tip. Um, I wanted it to be hollow so that you can tune it. Basically if the top spins roughly, Mm -hmm. you can get some, uh, sticker putty basically and find the sweet spot and make it spin dead smooth. Hmm. Um, those were a lot of things that I wanted (laughs) and not until, not until just recently I've been able to make it. And, uh, I, and I, I wanted to, that top, you know, now I, I like I will play with bigger tops now, and I only do fixed tips. So I I wasn't making a top for me anymore. I wanted to make a top for that person at that time when they're done with the little chintzy yo-yo size tops, and they want to move into bigger tricks. They want to perform for people. This is this is the top. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I've made bigger wooden tops out of plywood. Like all those years of making those gave me, you know, just my proportions, you know, how thick I wanted inside there. Uh, just, yeah. How the, the heights to width proportion, um, that's a collection of spin tops. Yeah. So those were the plywood tops that I used to make. Uh, I still make them, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I learned a lot through that process. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll get to, to that here in a second. I wanted to see if I could find the thing with the, uh, the, the tip that you made because I, I you sent me a diagram oh. of it yeah it's in there somewhere <laughs> no i have one here somewhere yeah a couple more. there we go so is this the tip from the sweet or this is just a generic no one? It, it's a few more that's uh that's one for plywood if you go just a couple more there we go there you go okay yep so so uh yeah i, I forgot that point so uh part of the problem with all the bearing tops is that lower bearing. So you can see the tip on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Then there's two bearings. And then, you know, uh, the lower one that's directly over the tip that gets crushed easily. Um, you know, you usually have a little step there after the tip so that the bearing spins freely. Mm-hmm. Well, that step just pushes right into that inner race of the bearing crushes the balls or gets them out of groove. And it just sounds all crunchy. And that's just what it costs to spin a top, you know, uh, that's the way it was. And so, huh. Um, while I was working on this with my buddies, Joel Norris and Lee Brawley, um, we came up with this idea of putting a, an O-ring in between 
that lower tip and that and that lower bearing or between the tip and the lower bearing hmm. and it works great it, it solves num- numerous issues actually oh wow. um and it but saving that bottom bearing just kind of opens this back up before it was just yeah bearings are cool but they break you know mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh to me this this really is a game changer for the industry that's really cool well we'll go we'll i'm sure we'll we'll be flipping through those those pictures here as we as we go along so um i also noticed there was the changeable lights now is that just you know is that just the spinning rims basically for the top or does that serve a purpose is that like to help you see it while you're flipping it all over the place or no no it makes it worse the the blink the because you know these are just uh party lights that i'm getting from amazon right so they're not designed for this specific application they were kind of just icing to put on the cake Mm -hmm. uh but it works pretty well um and uh, i don't really have a diagram of that but it uh, I just have a, an adapter that uh, that screws on to that post that you saw up in the middle of the top. Yeah. And uh, so that just right in there. Yeah. So just about where you see that those threads, there's an adapter and then a light that sticks straight up from it. And so um, it uh, when I print translucent with translucent filament, you know, you can see through it. And when they blink it's worse because you know you have to be in a a slightly darker environment for it to show up like Mm -hmm. you want but when it's blinking and going black every time it's not (laughs) it's you know and it's flying through the air it's easy to hit yourself in the eye (laughs) wow yeah i can imagine that would increase the difficulty level quite a bit there (laughs) yeah it does uh so really it's just it's just icing on the cake i mean i i uh I mean, I'd rather sell just a solid, no nonsense Sweetle, but it's just so easy to put those in there. It's just a ten dollar ad right now. So, oh, that's awesome. So, uh, yep. just I'm gonna, I'm gonna do just a quick bit of housekeeping here, just to to update the people that came in uh, uh, more recently. So, we're talking now with Chris Neff. Uh, what was the name again of your uh, of your company? Uh, Spin Top Workshop. Spin Top Workshop. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, Chris Neff from Spin Top Workshop. And uh, we're talking a little bit about how he prototyped a uh, uh, a, a new top that he's going to be releasing here soon, uh, and his use of three D printers uh, in coming, you know, in iterating the design as he went along. Uh, but a little bit more housekeeping, though. Uh, we do have uh, we are, of course, the Sin Shop located one zero seven five American Pacific Drive, Suite C, in Henderson, Nevada. You can visit us at sinshop.org. Uh, and you can catch us here every Friday and also on Monday for our project stream at 7.30 Pacific time, twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. Uh, also, don't forget, you know, fling us a follow if you like what you're seeing. If you have any questions for our guest tonight, read, uh, leave it in the chat. We will we will certainly ask those uh, for you. Uh, we've got all uh, we've got a whole nother half hour of the main show that we'll be posting to YouTube later. And then after that, we've got a whole uh, hour long post game. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to stick around for that. Outstanding. I think so. Okay, good deal. As long as my children don't come up here, we're fine. You know what? In, in the post game, it's anything goes. So even if they okay. do come up, that's it's, it, that's, that's up to you. So, uh, but yeah, uh, if anybody has any questions, anything like that, let us know. Uh, merchandise store is coming soon at some point, very soon, uh, and uh, we will have we will have awesome things. We are, huh. What's that? There's some neat shirt designs I saw. Yeah, and they, we we have some After neat some shirt. back and forth. After, yes, absolutely. We 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 will we will we are making it happen over here. All right. So anyway, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of get the housekeeping out of the way here, just so we can get to get to the 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 meat and potatoes here. So we did that. Let's talk parts. So okay. so uh, the the biggest thing that stands out about the tops is the plastic body. Now, typically when you have, uh, when you see 3D printed parts and something, that's usually for the prototype, right? But what yep. you're doing here is, you know, usually people do that up until they have a good design and then they start doing injection molding. But you are instead doing 3D printing for the production. So yep. why did you go in that direction? Like, why was that better than something like farming it out to a production house or something part of it is i'm still kind of refining it but as i go Mm -hmm. but but i'm also i mean i'm I'm refining it for this process so i mean i'm I'm changing things for the 3d printing process but if you look at that yeah that picture go back there oh the other Um, one yeah so it you can't plastic inject mold that in one piece that has to be two pieces 
So, and that's what, that's the mistake that I saw with all the other tops. So there is a, there is one, uh, Strumolate out of Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they make that, you know, a different shape, but they make their body out of machine Delrin. Uh, oh. Delrin's a plastic. I don't know if he's, yeah, it's a beautiful plastic, very durable. And that top is, is awesome because you're just not going to have any balancing issues because it's machine Delrin. Right. It's going to be dead centered, uh, and the bearings always been perfect. It's a great product. Um, it, it's, you know, he does small runs every once in a while, you know, it's not widely available and they're 120 or better, $120 or better. Mm. Um, so, uh, part of what I didn't really open my mind up to 3d printing until my buddy said, just give me your CAD file. I'll rotate it, make it 3d and print one and give it to you. See if you like it. Mm-hmm. Because I, I had seen it done a few times and it was always like really light and the, you know, this was earlier on a few years ago, you know, and the, it just did not look like something I wanted to mess with. But, but the designs I saw made some mistakes. They, they never made the wall any thicker. Um, the slicer that I use allows me to put, uh, uh, to vary the infill. So at the equator, I've got uh, probably 75% infill and then everywhere else I've got 25 and actually at the crown, I've reinforced it a little bit. So I've got all this amazing control. You know, if, if I start seeing breakage, you know, I can reinforce it there, you know, uh, and it's fun to try to balance, you know, your net print time versus your quality. Right. You know, I could, I could print this at, uh, you know, at, at a 0.3 millimeter layer height, you know, and get, get it done a lot faster, but it's not, it's going to be more open cell. It's going to, it's going to have that ridge feeling to it, you know, um, so I'm right now I'm just I've just dove in and I love the idea of keeping a printer busy all day long every day. Um I, I worked at a cabinet shop for about 7 years mm-hmm. and you know that my boss there would say if that machine ain't running we're not making any money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that stuff that soaks in, you know, and it, so it's fun to just yeah, let's see how many tops we can make if we I got it. I've got it set up so that my layer or my uh, color changes are at eight hours. So I've got you know, either the work day or sleep, you know, to to transfer those eight hours or to you know. Uh, so so yeah, I guess to, to answer that briefly, the two things are I don't. It's it's tough to do a one piece with plastic injection molding. Also, I've talked to other uh, uh, Dale Oliver uh, is the owner or creator of Spintastics and he did some tops and you know I, I've interviewed him several times about his process and he did aluminum tops he did plastic ejection tops and he had told some horror stories of like you know the best price he can get is China it was from China and then they stole his molds they just did not return his aluminum mm-hmm. molds and molds cost what two thousand dollars you know yep or better and with this process everything's in my house mm-hmm. you know <laughs> Yep. I, I don't. I don't have to trust uh, anybody. Now yeah. I, I do outsource the tips. There was a slide back there uh, of the tips. I I just drew that in CAD and and went to a local machine shop. Well, actually, um, the first run of tips I did with a guy named Lee Barali. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's on Instagram as Turning Heads Machining, and oh. he does those uh, those everyday those EDC tops mm-hmm. with the uh, you know the precious metals with like a ruby tip. Right. Uh, after that, a movie Inception came out, you know, this EDC stuff started happening and there's, he get, he sent me one. He's, I've got a finger spinner that I can spin with my fingers and it will spin for 14 minutes. Uh, it's not bad. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> I met this guy and he's like, I, and, and I was just getting started on this and I said, I need someone to make tips. He said, I, I have a lathe. Let's do it. So he made the first run of them by hand. And, uh, you know, those cost me a little bit cause it's a dude making tips by hand. Yeah. Uh, and I'm working with him with a buddy of, of his for, uh, uh, who's in CNC and doing an order from him, but I'm also supporting a local, uh, uh, a local machine shop. So I'm getting tips from two sources now. So, but it's, but that's very, you know, uh, uh, focused, you know, that's not molds that are someone else has it could take. Yeah. Those tips right there. Yeah. Those are from the, the local machine shop. Thanks. Uh, and that was easy. You know, you just draw that up in CAD, do the dimensions on it, get mm-hmm. a prototype, and then they make it for you. <laughs> what kind of accuracy do you need on this? Eh, accuracy? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As far as like the exact angle and stuff like that, no, it, that's not a big deal. The shaft have to be pretty precise because that goes in the 
the inner race of the bearings and yeah. i don't want that to wiggle you know uh it also can't be too tight obviously right uh, and then the length of the shaft you know if that shaft is too long the nut will bottom out on the shaft you know other than those two dimensions no it's it's not critical so if there's a human element to this it doesn't bother me very much mm -hmm. well i mean you know most most machinists will be able to get it down to where they can repeat it you know no problem yeah. but uh, yeah and my, my price was twelve dollars each that first run and they and they i i, I spent some time talking to the guy get you know and uh i think i won uh uh charmed him a little bit and he's, he's doing six dollars a tip now there you go so yeah all right yeah let me see if I can get this working again. Where'd you go? There we go. I wanted to ask you, so you mentioned earlier about color changing and I noticed, there it is. I noticed this rig here. So yep. what's, what's the story with that? Is that just to hold them and you can change them quicker or is it an automated thing or? Yeah, it's so that, uh, so those, uh, that just holds the reels and then there's bearing, there's bearings inside that PVC tubing there so that the, the reel is free to spin. And then if you go back to the, the previous slide in the cabinet, so I like to do tops with uh, color changes and you have to keep your filament in a dry box. Mm -hmm. So it, I had all these reels in, you know, a Tupperware container with the silica gel. And so anytime I want to change color, you know, I'd open it up, you know, losing all my dry air, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and switch out the rolls and put it back in, you know, so now with that filament just going up through the it goes up through the shelf mm -hmm. so i can just when it's a filament change i just grab that filament and just jam it in the in the machine yeah oh that's pretty ingenious i like that yeah it's and so yeah you can see i've got the silica cell the gel down there and a human you know human i'm trying to keep track of how humid it right now uh so this is up in my attic Mm -hmm. And right now with these uh, 90 degree days and this, you know, occasional rain, I'm having a hard time maintaining good humidity here. But uh, this I couldn't do it at all without this box. That's for sure. 90 degree days. That must be that must be hard for you. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, no, no, no. It's, you know, I'm, but it's a dry heat. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm from the Midwest. But I know all about the wet heat that you guys have. Out yeah, there. man. I'm, I mean, Florida ain't got nothing on us. Anyway. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, Florida is. It's hot. Florida is Florida. It's, it's very Florida. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's true. So I loved this uh, this this setup here. That's that's great. And I also one thing, I, another thing I noticed that you didn't mention here is you got a UPS on it. Ah, yeah. somebody's. Yeah, that the Prusa Mini does not have a uh, power recovery on it. So uh, I put a UPS on there, and hopefully that I could at least. And the problem is, is you know. Um, I don't even want it to keep printing. I just want to be able to pause it until the power comes back on. Yeah. Cause it's got two heaters, you know, it's got the nozzle and the bed. Mm -hmm. And so I can pause it and at least the, the nozzle is not heating up, but I'm still, I I've only got maybe 50 minutes with that. Uh, well, no, I think it's longer, maybe an hour or two. I mean, that's still uh, with not that bad. Bed staying hot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. I, I love, I love your setup there. I was actually thinking about doing something similar to that. Like, where'd you get the case from? Uh, that's a, that's a metal shelf unit that I got at Menards and oh, then I yeah. made the doors out of a, and that's just uh plexiglass doors. Oh, okay. And then I, I, I took the shit, you know, I took Masonite and then, you know, covered the other sides, the, the back and the sides are covered with Masonite. I was thinking about doing that for my PC just to have some way to like keep the sound out of, you know, out of the microphone right now, I've got to run through all these processors and stuff. But if I could get the room yeah. just a little more quiet, then don't even need it. But that's, that's right. really cool. I noticed that. Awesome. And then that whole, uh, that rig for the reels is made out of connects and I use connects for several things. It, I was actually seeing the slides there. Yeah. I was actually going to go so, to the, the other thing that you use connects for this little monstrosity. Yeah. So I, yeah. <laughs> I came up now. Well, uh, Alan Gray as the first guy I saw, he used it, but he, he only used it for three strands of string. I twist my own string for the spin tops that I make. And this is pretty important because the, the, the thickness of the string and length of the string affects how it plays and you need to have control over that. So, hmm. uh, I use size 10 crochet thread and I, uh, for the Sweetle, I use, uh, four strands per hook there. Okay. Uh, so it's four ply string and, and four ply string. I don't know if you ever, cause you don't, you don't see that very often. It's, it's just more round. It's just a lot more, uh, uh, keeps its shape a lot better. Mm, okay. Uh, you don't want it too stiff because you kind of lose the feeling at the tip. Um, but 
And so I can control all that with this rig. Uh, and, it, and it's really easy to use. You just hold it. You just turn on the drill, hold it, twist it up, and then just let go of it and then put the drill back on. So when you're, when you're holding the gearbox, it's reverse spin. When you let go of the re- gearbox, it's spinning the, the regular way. It's hard to explain, but it's super, super oh. easy to make a string. I oh, can make okay. a string in about three minutes. So it's kind of sort of like a, uh, like a planetary gear where the, where yeah. whatever's stationary, the other thing yeah. moves. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's got a center gear and then orbital gears. And so when you're holding it, it's spinning that way. And then when you let go of it, 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 so, you know, to make a string, you, you twist it and then let it twist back on itself. That's how you make a string. Okay. So it just, and, hmm. and you know, if you look up string making, there's much more complicated ways to do it. Like, uh, like, Oh yeah, there's a uh, really fun to watch, uh, like old jute string, you know, like on a farm mm-hmm. there, there, they had these huge mechanical steel things that you turn and then like this comb that went down the middle of it and you had to drag both ends, you know, and I don't think you need to do all that. <laughs> that sounds like a farm but thing. Like it's neat to watch, but it's, I think it's like overkill. I've seen apple peelers that were, uh, were similar to that. <laughs> yep. Yep. That is, that is neat. So, so how'd you come up with the design for that? You're like, I just, you're just like, I know what I need to do kind of. So I did, I did have inspiration. This, uh, this Alan Gray guy made a very similar one. And when I just, what the heck I'll try it. And it made sense to do four. I think I was the first guy to, to do it in the spin top community anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's way better. The string is just, it's just better. Interesting. Um, so, but he, his method was different. Like he was, he was winding it up with a, like an act by hand and he was hanging it from the ceiling to let it untwist on itself. And mm-hmm. on that picture, you can see on the, on the other end, I just have four hooks, four dead hooks on a board. So I can just do it all from the drill, from the business end and, you know, cut it when I'm done and make another one. So doesn't that start to over time pull towards, you know, pull the, pull the drill set up towards the stationary yes. hook? Yes. And the, and the, my first tendency was to control that, to like put the drill or put that whole rig on a rail system so that mm-hmm. I can put weights on it so I can control the tension. You just need to hold it. <laughs> you just oh. walk forward. It. So my, my net difference, like I take like two steps to the right is the net difference. It shrinks like a, hmm. the net shrinkage is like 70%. I think, you know, when you're all said and done. So if I had a longer table under the drill, it'd be a little bit easier so I could set it down once I'm done doing the, the, the initial twist. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just not trying to take over the whole house with my, my rigs <laughs> and stuff. So, well, uh, well you have to have room put for it all the, away real quick. You have room for the library and the drum set. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, that's, that's, that is super cool. I love, I love seeing the, the, the homemade setup and I love, I love, I don't know. I have a thing for gear trains. It's, it's, it's a thing, you know, whatever. Now it'd be, it would be fun to do this, to do that in a, you know, make a 3d gearbox. Cause I'm sure I could, mm-hmm. cause this has a limit. Like if you get much bigger than this, this string wise, it, it's just too big for that system. Mm-hmm. So it'd be, it'd be really cool to make a bigger one. You know, if I start making, you know, 10 inch diameter tops, I might have to dive into that. There's a guy on YouTube. I cannot remember the name of the channel, but he makes Lego machines and he does things like, uh, like trying to see how fast he can get a Lego uh, techniques to spin. And he got it. Yeah. He got it. I want to say it was north of 20,000 RPM. It was something just, yeah. just <laughs> insane. Like yep. the thing was throwing itself apart. And then he did one where he was trying to see how much torque he could put on. I'm going to try to find that later on. Maybe I saw that, that video. It was uh, pretty interesting. Like it was, I think there was one I saw where there was like, there was one end that was stationary and then another where it would just, you know, multiple gears yeah. grinding on the, the torque and he used uh like they have metal Lego shafts mm-hmm. and seeing like how much tension it took to even break that and I did I saw that one. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot remember the name of that channel, but it was it was super cool. Uh let's there's see. one more connects thing on there. All right. Uh let me see. Was it before the uh no, keep going the other way. The other way, okay. I don't know what that way is. It's that way. Okay. Oh there yeah, you. that was that was going to be the next thing I asked you about. Yeah. So there was some back and forth on that. Is this for painting or is this for sanding? This is uh, painting. So I, um, I was. Wrong. Yeah. So this is interesting. Um, 
one thing that I've come up with or stumbled upon, we were having some problems in the prototypes with balance issues. And uh, the Joel Norris was a guy I was working with. Uh, he was printing, you know, just like you would with a print seam, you know, in your, in your printer settings, you can say, uh, uh, well, with the Prusa slicer anyway, you can say whether it's line, aligned, you know, print seams, you know, where the, where the layers start and stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we found that you, if you hit a uh, uh, random, you never, you didn't get a seam. And so, but the, the downside of that is you've got these little nubs everywhere. So everywhere there's a, a start point on the outer layers, you've got a, just a little bit of a bubble pop, you know, or just a little bit mm-hmm. of a filament bubble. Mm-hmm. But I just, I stick this on the lathe. I sand it with 220 real quick. And then with a piece of uh, uh, steel wool and then uh, hose it all off. You know, well, not hose it, but uh, air hose it off <laughs> so that there's no dust on it. And then put a layer of, uh, or a, coat, a couple of coats of, uh, uh, it's just a clear coat spray paint that I get at Walmart. Hmm. Um, I looked at doing, uh, uh, XDC makes, uh, you know, a smooth on makes, uh, uh, coating, you know, a two part epoxy coating specifically for, uh, 3d printing filaments. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty awesome, but it takes a while, you know, mixing that epoxy and brushing that on and getting the bubbles out. Uh, and it also looks a little bit more like it's got a bunch of epoxy on it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, yeah. Whereas this is just a pretty, you know, it's just, it's just a really free, uh, smooth 3d print is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, um, after it's sanded and coated like that. Now is it, do these like turn while they're drying or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The whole point was that, yeah, while you're and while you're spraying it so that I don't have to, uh, you know, hang them from hooks or something like right, that. Right. You know, and, yeah. And so I'm all, I'm spraying down onto the table Cause this is still in my house and I've got a window right above this with a fan in it blowing out, you know? Um, but anyway, so yeah, it slowly turns so that I can put coats on evenly and then it continues to spin so that it, you know, just in case I got a little thick somewhere, it doesn't get a drip. Yeah. I do a similar method. So I make uh Tesla coils. And Ooh. so you put a, a, show a, about you. <laughs> a, a thick coat of uh, polyurethane on, on the, on the secondary yeah but if you if it just sits there then it's all going to collect on the bottom so you just while it's curing you just it rotates right. the entire time so yeah yeah same concept so yeah what, connect, oh go ahead. have been awfully useful for me oh i'm sure yeah no clearly so what's what's controlling those like controlling the speed and all that stuff is it a yeah in between the the blue and the black and blue uh, between the two yellow gears there, there's a tiny connects motor. Mm-hmm. It's just a, uh, uh, double a two double a battery, little connects motor. It's hard to see in that picture. Oh, okay. And they have like the color designates the speed of that motor. So like the green ones are kind of a slow, uh, I think the, the black ones are slower than this. That'd be too slow for this. And the blue ones are faster. The question from the chat, are the stripes painted in or, or with a layer pause? And I believe yeah, those are uh, color changes. Yeah, filament changes. Yep. Yeah, and I, I the I really like the stripe ones. Uh, I noticed when I I opened this up for sale, like uh, people were I was posting, you know, hey, I'm I'm working on this, you know, posting pictures like this, and mm-hmm. people are like, I need one, and then well, I'll put you on a list. So I've had this massive list, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, they, a lot of people pick the solid ones first and I, I don't, I'm not sure why, but the stripe really, while it's spinning and it tilts and you see that stripe kind of tilting, that horizontal line really shows you that it's a, a teardrop, a teardrop shape balanced in your hand. You know, you really get that effect a little bit better than mm-hmm. like, if your video is not great, you're, if it's a green top, it kind of turns into a green ball, you know, versus. Okay. Yeah. Something that's spinning. It's just like, he's just holding it there. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, yeah if it, it just doesn't look, you don't get the effect as much. Awesome. Awesome. So I wanted to, uh, let's see, do I, we'll come back to some of the other production stuff here afterwards, but just so I can make sure we get it into the main show, I wanted to ask, ask you about the actual manufacturing, like, like getting it out there. You mentioned a little bit about how you had uh, several people that were, uh, talking to you about, Hey, you know, let me get one of these, blah, blah, blah. So is your ultimate plan to, um, to just kind of keep it, um, you know, keep it a hobby type of thing out of the garage or is your plan eventually to be end up in stores or somewhere in between? Like what's the, 
What's the, the overall goal is plan? To have an, yeah, uh, good question. Uh, current goal is to have an online store. Uh, I'll always maintain like those plywood tops. I was selling, you know, people just find me and they say, I want a plywood top. I put them on a list and they waited way too long for it. And then they got it one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I'll maintain some degree of that. I just know so many people in this weird little hobby that we have. So I, I'm sure I'll continue to do kind of specialty items. But the goal here is to have an online store is, is phase one. Uh, that's selling 3D tops and just see if I can keep up. Yeah. If I can keep up with demand, uh, probably I'm definitely looking at buying a second printer mm-hmm. uh, and trying to time out ordering of tips, you know, and, you know, the material costs. And just, I just want to do that There's- for a while and see if I reevaluate and go from there. And, and the, the point is, or the idea is uh, just to, right now, there's no one's made, I mean, except for, uh, Yo-Yo Factory is making uh, some great tops for the money, like $6 tops mm-hmm. uh, that don't break like the other ones I mentioned before. They don't break near as easy. Some of the tips pop out a little bit too easy, mm-hmm. but they're great. But that's it. Uh, whereas before, there were at least you know three or four brands. No one in the U.S. is making a spin top other than Yo-Yo Factory. See, There's I've... some in Mexico, yeah. uh, but, they, but they're more uh, uh, they're strictly smaller plastic. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to ask you about that because one thing I noticed in the video, and and I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it. It worked well the first time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave well enough alone on that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the uh, one of the things that I did notice uh, in the video that we played earlier of you uh, at the World Championship was how low on the the board behind you, how low Duncan was. Right. Because oh, when, yeah. when I was growing up, Duncan was, you know, Duncan, you know, the almighty all seeing yo-yo masters. Right. Um, yeah. So so are they still involved? Are they still a thing? Um, they're, They go through. Frozen troughs. It looks like I'm frozen. Do you think I should? Yeah. Sign out and join again. Or you just are. Save it? You are. But, we, you know, we're, we're 10 minutes from the break anyway. We can we can okay. sort it. We can sort <laughs> yeah, it out. There. Uh, Duncan earned their name by Donald F. Duncan mm-hmm. uh, created that company back in 1935 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And his efforts are the reason that you know that name. Right. I mean, his tours and his presence in the playgrounds, you know, with his demonstrators. And But he was obsessed with the term yo-yo. Hmm. He wanted to trademark the word yo-yo. And he lost everything doing it. He went bankrupt in court trying to trademark the word yo-yo wow flambeau plastics bought duncan from him in some time in the late 60s early 70s and have been uh, they've been they will go through phases where they just make worse and worse yo-yos mm-hmm. like keep taking plastic out of them and just surfing on that name i mean they did that for years mm-hmm. and uh when when i was a dem- yo-yo demonstrator in the uh, late 90s a Duncan rep showed up and is like, Hey, so what are you throwing? And no one said Duncan, oh. not one person, <laughs> you know? And they're like, Oh God. And he took the news back and no one's throwing Duncan yo-yos. Oh my God. Yeah. And then the next thing I knew I was working for him, like they had this knee jerk reaction and they, they're <laughs> like, Oh, we got it. We got it. And they, they came up with some new designs that were kind of pointless. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so ever since they've been going through phases of, yes, we're going to embrace the current avant-garde, and you know, uh, you know, try to get in there, and, and then other, and then they'll get hire a new marketing manager, and they're like, no, we only want new people. You know, I don't care. I'm going back. They just want the Walmart sales. Okay. And so, and, and you know, so to me, there's there's Duncan, and then there's Flambeau, and they are different things. Okay. In and my Flam- opinion, Flambeau still owns Duncan today, or what's that? And Flambeau still owns Duncan today or no? Yeah. Okay. They, they still own it, but I'm trying to say that, that the, the demonstrators mm-hmm. own the word Duncan to some degree. I mean, they're, they are the face of Duncan toys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to, to hold out for, for the old guard of Duncan yo-yos that, you know, there's a presence there. Um, hmm. you know, it's not gone, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, it, it, sometimes it's uh it's a little uh 
inconvenienced by by the parent company. Hmm. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. Like, because it's kind of weird. Like, so, so how much, see, we, we, we kind of have a thing in common, right? We both once upon a time did something really well. Right. And then we stopped. Mm -hmm. The difference between us is you, you came kind of came back and was like, you know, Hey, I can do this. And I came back in and I was like, Hey, everyone here is 12. I shouldn't, <laughs> I'm getting out of here. I gotta leave. <laughs> well, in a way, I mean, I did, I did do your version because yo-yoing I can't keep up with. Uh -huh. like the kids who yo-yo today are, are very, are very good. So I'm an old time demonstrator now, but it's fun to kind of embrace that and just yeah. be you, be right. the nineties yo-yoer. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. The, the spin top thing though was untapped. Like it was unchanged from when I left. Really? And yeah, it just, it, cause it, it just, it, and then it hasn't changed much since then. It's just, it's the learning because of what we talked about before. The learning curve is so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, no one's demonstrating with them. Like the reason that uh, you know about spin tops is because Duncan at one time did a campaign. Yeah. You know, back in the day, they, they, they created the interest. And it seems like now a lot of companies are waiting for the interest to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, it, I don't know, it's this different world, I guess. Hmm. So, with you just selling these online, because it sounds to me like the the traditional, like, uh, you know, the shop that, that you worked at in, in Kansas City a long time ago that sold kites and yo-yos and all that stuff. It sounds like that has kind of gone away for the most part. Is that wrong or, or is it there just... There are not many left. That's correct. Yeah. I, there's a Go Big is a store that I believe is still open. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of, you know, some of the old, uh, some of the kids parents of the kids that used to that i used to teach mm -hmm. opened a store called go big go big and uh i think they're still open um yeah it, it's going away uh which is sad but but there are still clubs that you know that uh come and go yeah yo-yo clubs you know uh, and but um uh, to me the the best spot for this one-on-one -on -one is juggling conventions they just have the greatest format the great people mm -hmm. uh, you know makers fit right in there uh uh, clowns fit in there, you know, I mean, <laughs> any type of person who's just into something weird fits in there, you know, yeah. uh, it, it's a great group of people. Hang out here, they, uh, you know, Bill Con, that, that, yeah, you just see the, the, the most random things that there's a, you know, very dedicated group of people that do this thing. And yep. yeah, so it's cool to check that out. Yep. Yeah, we mentioned uh, so, uh, SkillCon earlier in the in the, in the show, I believe, and that's yeah, e exactly it. Like all kinds of different people coming together and with with their different uh, their different talents. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was just saying, um, but you're reminding me of so with the online store, I need to get to work on tutorials. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be more than just a product. I want it to be, I want Spin Top Workshop to be a place to buy tops, the Sweetle by Neff and Norris or whatever. Mm -hmm. So. That, just briefly, that's a separate product by Neff and Norris, the Sweetle, and then Spin Top Workshop is supposed to be this kind of parent company. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, with uh, maybe guest makers, like maybe I'm selling somebody who does a different product, you know, or little finger spinners. Yeah. Anyway, but to make Spin Top Workshop complete, it needs to have tutorials and lessons, you know, and, and walkthroughs and readmes and stuff like that. So that's kind of the 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 next push once I get this product off the bench is getting a you know making that website look good and uh getting some tutorials out there because there just aren't any hmm. <laughs> well yeah i can imagine you know somebody sees that somewhere and, and is like you know hey i need to i want to get into this how do i get into this you know like i can i can yeah. see that being something where you know educating people on what to do next and their next steps it definitely comes in handy i'm sure yeah and that, that's that's the the motivation for this website and for for the for the product and for those videos is i keep having to answer these questions <laughs> where do i get good spin tops yeah. and where are the videos and i want a place to point and you know here you go over there for a minute yeah yeah <laughs> you know there there needs to be a destination for that mm -hmm. absolutely there 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 are forums out there and stuff like that and uh the the main one would rather you ask the question mm -hmm. like they want the discussion than to just provide the boilerplate of information. So I, I want to provide 
the boilerplate. Like right. these are the standards. This is the information you need to get started. Some people don't want to, you know, they're, they're introverts, you know, they don't want to like have to ask questions yeah. to get going. You know, they want to, they want to do their research online, get good, then present themselves, you know? Interesting. Okay. So one thing I did want to know about the actual, you know, you, you had mentioned before about like controlling inventory and all that stuff. And one thing that I learned from running a record store directly into the ground was, uh, <laughs> was that if you like a thing, you really should not, this is, this is for me. I'm not saying for everybody, but if you like doing a thing, you really should not make a business out of doing that thing because you will eventually hate that thing. Because like, well, I wanted to, I wanted to have a record store. Right. And I wanted to, you know, sell records and, and, you know, uh, what was that movie with John Cusack? It doesn't matter. But, um, you know, I, I was sitting here thinking it would be like that. And it wasn't like that. It was sitting in the back room, pouring over a bunch of records that I did not care about trying to figure out which ones would sell. And so I was right. like, you know, the, putting the business with the music kind of screwed up the music for me. And it sounds like, it, and that's just my personality personally, right? It sounds like you're, you're free of that. Thank goodness. But I guess where I'm going with all this is what, like, did you have to go through any kind of legal rag wrangling or whatever, like with trademarks and patents or, or you know, or, or, uh, like taxes and stuff like that? Did you have to get a business license or is this just kind of a thing like, Hey, I make this and I sell these. Yeah. I'm, I'm constantly working on that. So I, I do have a registered fictitious name. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, uh, registered with the state and with the city, uh, you know, to be able to do online sales. And I'm, and I, I, from what I understand, uh, I'm, I, and I'm building a website with Squarespace mm -hmm. and I think, I think all of that is manageable. Like, I think I have to charge tax sales tax if I sell to someone in the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, otherwise I do not. Yeah. Um, and so I think I have a handle on all that stuff and I'm not excited about doing, a doing my taxes next year. <laughs> uh, you know, I, but uh, I'm not afraid of it. You know, I'm, I, I carefully thought about all of this. You know, I, if, if I, if I print 50 tops, I need to make 50 strings, you know? Yeah. And so I, I've, I've thought about this stuff and, uh, and I can do it. Um, you know, maybe one day it's something, you know, maybe it grows into something a little different, you know, more, uh, you know, outsourced materials and stuff like that. Maybe it's a company that the, that the kids can take over. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do this legit, uh, I, with, by registering the name, uh, I'm going to pay taxes on it, you know? Sure. Um, and, and I, I think, uh, I think I can avoid the experience you had in the back of the record store. Um, I, I'm not guarantee it. I'm sure there's something here that I'm not going to like, like I said, the taxes, you know, I'm not excited about that, but, yeah. um, you, you've got yeah. your head around it. You know what you're getting into. I, I think so. <laughs> you're not, you're not a so. 20 something year old DJ. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think, I think you'll be fine. And especially with a product like this, and it seems to be serving a market niche as it is. Uh, I think it's still gonna, uh, I, I think it's, it's definitely filling a need in that community. And you know, that's, that's what you do. You find a need and fill it. You and know? That, and that, that feels great. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that just feels great. And so I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not making my, like right now I'm interested in paying myself back for the printer or stuff like that. You know, I just want to, uh, make it self sustain. I'm not trying to pay for college, you know, kids college sure. with this. Yep. Um, the, but I don't want it to be a waste of time either. So I, I constantly stress over the right price, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but I'm, I'm, when the website goes up, this is going to have to be that price. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, I forgot where I was going. Um, dodging the, uh, business sucking the fun out of the fun part. Oh yeah. Yeah. I still forgot where I was going. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I did what I could. Well, I'll tell you what yeah. we're up. It's the, it's the bottom of the hour. So why don't we do this? This is pretty much going to be the end of the main show. Anyway, you're able to stick around, right? For the post game. Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Cause I got so many more questions. I want to, I want to ask you some stuff about, uh, let's see what was about. Oh, I want to go, go back to manufacturing for a little bit. I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, the Duncan life on the road. 
definitely oh yeah i definitely would like to hear a couple of battle stories that sounds fun uh maybe get back into the actual manufacturing and of course if anybody has any questions uh to ask our our guest here tonight chris neff uh please do feel free to leave it in the chat we'll uh, we will check those out as soon as we get back uh probably gonna take about a five ten minute break something like that uh, you know, everybody get a drink. We'll get, we're going to refresh your video. So that works for another half hour or so. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, we'll go from there. Cool. All righty. All right. Sounds good. Well then in that case with that, that ends the main show, but everybody on Twitch stick around. Uh, we'll be back in about five or 10 minutes. And, uh, until then I am of course the mighty pong and, uh, we will see you here in uh, about five to 10 minutes. Be right back. Hi, I'm the Mighty Pong, host of the show that you just got done watching. Hey, if you'd like to see the entire show and not just the first hour, make sure that you watch on twitch.tv forward slash sinshop every Friday night for the main show. And on Monday nights, we have our special project night. So you can join us, build something, and uh, basically throw stuff at us while we try to concentrate on things. It's a lot of fun. Kind of. But hey, anyway, we hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. I am of course the mighty pong and we will see you there. One take. Not one take.